Okay, so at this point, I get it. I really do. You guys are sitting there pretty much just thinking, release the benchmarks already. I mean, we've known about Rise and Threadripper uh, for some time now, but AMD seems hell-bent on spoon-feeding us information once every few weeks or so. It really started at Computex. We were wowed with a few menacing-looking X399 motherboards, and of course, AMD announced that the CPUs would pack an insane 64 PCIe lanes. Uh, unheard of for a desktop processor, even an extreme uh, high-end desktop processor. At the time, we also knew that there would be an 18-core 32-thread monster, and that quad-channel DDR4 memory would be on offer. Then more recently, AMD released further details regarding the models now known as Threadripper 1950X and 1920X. Today, AMD is letting a few more details out of the bag, and this is why you're watching yet another Threadripper video that talks about Threadripper without actually having anything in hand. So again, sorry about that. <laughs> There are, however, a few juicy details to discuss, and I can thankfully tell you guys that my review will be coming on the 10th of August. So that's next Thursday. All the benchmarks, all the stuff you've been waiting for will be out then. So not too long to wait now. Before then, I will be unboxing Threadripper, and I'm extremely excited about that. That'll be on the next episode of Unboxing Boxes later this week. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, at least now you know that the review is on the way soon, the 10th of August, not too long to wait now. Okay, so let's go over some information AMD released over the weekend and is now allowing us to share with you today. AMD started by saying Ryzen has seen the return of innovation for high performance PCs. And well, that is indeed true. The success of Ryzen has also allowed the company to increase their research and development budget, which will see innovation continue and hopefully at an even faster rate. They also say that Ryzen has injected excitement back into PCs, and I have to fully agree with that. It's really nice being able to review CPUs again, rather than just recommend whatever it is that the blue team's offering. Next up, we have a look at the Ryzen roadmap, and here we can see that once AMD execute their Threadripper launch next week, all attention will turn to the mobile APUs in the fourth quarter of this year. So that's exciting indeed, and it will see Tim become quite busy. <laughs> I'm also keen to check out the desktop APUs, but presumably they won't be arriving till next year. I thought they were going with Shed super high-end desktop, but so far I've only seen AMD refer to their extreme desktop platform as HEDT, which stands for high-end desktop. Okay, so we know Threadripper is a high-end desktop platform offering greater memory support and bandwidth along with vastly superior connectivity and expansion thanks to all those extra PCIe lanes. We also know that when compared to Intel's Core X range, Threadripper will be very competitive in terms of pricing. We even know it will come in a fancy package, so that should make the unboxing experience all the more exciting. Moving on, nothing really new was said about the 1950X and 1920X, though AMD did release a few slides that show the kind of performance gains consumers can expect to see over the competing Intel parts in applications such as Premiere Pro and Handbrake, for example. Based on the numbers seen here, the 1950X will have the Core i9-7900X well and truly beaten, so it will be interesting to see how they compare in our review on the 10th. Meanwhile, it looks like the 1920X will deliver similar performance to the 7900X at a 20% price saving. Now, the new CPU to get announced here is the Threadripper 1900X, a CPU many of us were anticipating, but it's now officially been announced. This is basically a Ryzen 7 CPU for the X399 platform, but with a few key upgrades. Like the 1920X and 1950X, the 1900X gets quad-channel memory support and, crucially, 64 PCIe lanes. Like the Ryzen 7 CPUs, it will boast 8 cores and 16 threads and operate at a base clock frequency of 3.8GHz with a 4GHz boost speed. It will be coming in at $550 US, which is obviously quite a hefty price premium over the base model Ryzen 7 1700, but again, you do get it on AMD's flagship platform. When compared on paper with the Core i7-7820X, the 1900X offers the same amount of cores and threads, 5% more cache, the same quad-channel memory support, but more than twice as many PCIe lanes. It's also likely to cost around 10% less, given the suggested retail prices. AMD then moved on to show their superior performance per watt based on the Blender application results, and based on their testing, the 1950X was 24% faster than the Core i9-7900X while drawing 2% less power from the wall, and presumably they did use the same power supply for both systems. 
There is said to be a full ecosystem of X399 motherboards at launch, and I should have models from ASRock, Gigabyte, and MSI for my day one coverage. There'll also be a range of 180 watt liquid and air-cooled cooling solutions to choose from, and it looks like existing coolers can be adapted to the massive Threadripper CPUs using an AM4 to TR4 adapter, which has been manufactured by Acetech and will be supplied with the Threadripper CPUs. Presumably though, for the best results, you will want a large base plate on the cooler. Finally, at the event over the weekend, AMD did have a live Threadripper overclocking demo where they hit 5.2 GHz using Allen 2 and broke the Cinebench R15 world record with a score of 4,122 points. Not bad, eh? Of course, on air or liquid, I expect similar headroom to what we've already seen with Ryzen 7. Speaking of size, some interesting information surfaced this week. The Threadripper CPUs actually feature four physical dies, though two of them are disabled. Uh, but I had assumed this was the case anyway, given the evidence at hand, but it's now been confirmed. As I said in my previous Threadripper video, these CPUs pack two Zeppelin dies. The Epic server grade chips, for example, use four of these dies, but like Epic, Threadripper uses the same TR4 socket, and that means the CPUs have the same incredible 4,094 pins. So basically Threadripper is an Epic CPU with two of the Zeppelin dies disabled, and that makes it kind of like what Ryzen 5 1400 is to maybe like Ryzen 7 1700, for example. Anyway, that's going to do it for this Threadripper update. Uh, I am glad this will be the last time I touch on the subject without actually having a CPU in hand. That said, I felt it was worth making this video to inform you guys that there will be a $550 US 8-core option in the 1900X, and that model will go on sale later this month. Uh, so that's going to do it for this one. I am going to get out of here and get back to the Ryzen 3 benchmarking. I have a heap to do still, and I'm hoping to put up a video probably after that unboxing and boxes episode that I'm so excited about. But yeah, big Ryzen 3 benchmark video coming this week. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time, guys.